Today, the Bob Excursion gets a new rear axle. Let's get you right to it. Let's get right to unloading those suckers from the trailer. All right. Um, these axles are pretty heavy. The back of the Jeep is uh, almost on the bump stops with a uh, couple of axles on the trailer. We are going to uh, attempt to get these off with just two of us. And uh, yeah, we'll see. We're gonna, we're gonna film it. It might be interesting. Uh, it, it might go away on the film, but uh, let's see if we can get these on the floor. Rugged Fab Works, Midnight. We were successful. All right, well, huge shout out to Rugged Fab Works. I loaded those things by ourselves. You can see uh, it, was, it was a little sketchy, uh, but uh, we survived and uh, they got to be on the floor here. And uh, yeah, so today we are gonna start putting the rear axle in. So if you are doing the coil swap and you want to match the rear axle, the reasoning being the track width, um, it is the same rear axle as a excursion, kind of. Uh, I found out today, and I will tell you guys as we go through this video, what works and uh, what doesn't work. So anyway, let's get to uh, pulling the original axle out of there and uh, stuffing this new one under there. And I'll show you guys the whole process, sped up and stuff like that. And then I'm gonna talk through some of the things that didn't fit. So stay tuned, let's get rolling. Four, five, six. I have the rear axle on the ground. Uh, somebody is supposedly buying the, uh, hopefully he picks them up by the time this video goes out, uh, the <laughs> wheels that were on this. So that made it to where I had to switch the wheels. And uh, just so you know, the fine lug nuts are a 2005 plus thing. So I had to buy a couple lug nuts just to hold the front wheels on. Uh, I'm not gonna drive it or anything like that. So we swap the axle now. So now we actually have a time crunch to swap the axle. So uh, anyway, I'm throwing the back one on and uh, really going pretty well. Uh, I want to show you guys the difference. We're going to we're gonna do some measuring. We're going to do all that kind of stuff. So here at Geeks 4 by 4 we seem to have an excursion problem. And the only cure to help that problem is for you to like this video. So if you would just hit that little thumbs up button, that would make my life and my excursions lives just that much better thank you for hitting the like button today 
All right, well, hopefully you can see me. The first step in the axle swap series is gonna be the rear axle. And uh, I just wanted to show you guys both of them sitting side by side. This is the original Ford Excursion axle right here. And this is the 2005 Super Duty axle. Um, I am noticing a couple of differences, but everybody says things go together. I need to look up stuff on the sensor. That sensor that's on the 05 definitely doesn't plug in. Uh, this sensor is a little bit different, so, but I think I can just swap them. They look like they just bolt in. So uh, I'm gonna swap them without reading anything because why would you wanna do that? And uh, anyway, yeah, we're gonna swap them and see uh, what we end up with there. And then uh, brake lines, the guy cut my brake line off on the one I'm swapping in. So I've gotta get a brake line made for that but uh, that's fine because I need a longer one anyway. And so uh, I'll get that done. I'm gonna set this thing underneath the truck though and uh, do that. I'm probably gonna move the shock mounts. The, the, the trucks have one shock on the front, one shock on the back. And so the excursion is obviously both on the back. And uh, looks like the parking brake cables are the same, which is awesome. Uh, excuse my putting in there, but these have a little clip on them but it looks like this will just go right into the factory excursion thing. That wasn't that hard to get apart on this excursion. I, I had trouble with the van, uh, but this excursion was really easy. You just kind of bend one side down and pop it out, and then you cut the other one side free. So uh, anyway, let's measure these things. I'm curious here, where our width difference comes from? I'm gonna measure from the, well, let's measure from the Dutch joke, because that's easier. That is 61, I mean, just barely an eighth. 61 and just barely an eighth. And then I'm pop over here, inside of the dust shield, or outside of the dust shield, 61 and three quarter. So that's wider on the other. But I think this is where they get it from. The hat, or whatever you want to call it, um, on the brake rotor is three and just over a half, almost five eighths, three and five eighths. And this one is two and three quarters. So it's almost an inch wider from here to here uh, on the Super Duty one. Uh, so the, the axle, and the same thing, this, this hub that houses the axle shaft, this hub is just about two inches, and this one is three and a half. So, that's how far this hat is slid out. So it's an inch and a half ish. So it is wider. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'm gonna switch that sensor and then I'm gonna turn that around and shove it under the truck. You look very interchangeable to me. back to the leaf springs nothing's torqued down or anything but uh the axle is hanging there so pretty cool i'm gonna hook up the emergency brake lines and i've got to figure out how to hook up the actual brake line because i gotta get a new one of some sort uh and see if the drive shaft fits and things like that so well, i'll let you guys know uh i know my my speed sensor will plug in you guys saw me change that i don't know if it's gonna work and I probably won't be able to test that. I know I won't be able to test that until I get the brake line set up because these wheels are just going to be free and I, I can't put it in gear. So uh, anyway, we're, uh, we're getting somewhere here. Today's salute goes out to Ford. Thank you, Ford, 
for making parts that fit on our old trucks from your new trucks so that we can make our old trucks like your new trucks because they're better. Thanks, Ford. Okay, so I've got the e-brake lines routed. That one stuck straight out. I had to bend it down. And then that is the driver's side. And the driver's side goes on top. See, I already got it hooked up and everything. Passenger side goes on the bottom. I routed it to where it's really close. I really wanted to route it through up there too, but it doesn't line up well enough with the mount. So I bent this one up to get it to stay up. I want this stuff away from the rocks on my build. If you don't care about the rocks, you're fine. Uh, and uh, yeah, I gotta cut these two mounts off of the driver one. There's two more mounts on the driver one on the truck than the excursion. So uh, yeah, he breaks in. And now I'm gonna hook up the thing. I left all the clips on the um, speedometer cable. And so I'm just gonna clip them back around the e-brake line and that will be finished. All right, well, I ran into my first part that I've had to order uh, and I wanted you guys to know, this is my brake line off of that axle. So it's attached through the vent. The vent tube actually has a thread on the bottom of it and it goes right through this hole and goes into the axle, just in case you didn't know that. Um, mine was cut by the guy that took the axles out. I didn't end up taking these out myself. So um, it was cut. But uh, I have found out today, and I have one on order from Napa. It's forty-eight dollars right now to twenty twenty-three March, um, and it is twenty-four inches long. Well, the stock excursion one is twenty, and so uh, that gives you room for a four inches of lift just with a stock F two hundred and fifty uh, rear brake line. So that's pretty awesome. Uh, when you're pulling your axles, be careful. Try and use this. If not, Napa's got them. They're, they're on order thing. So, um, the local warehouse had them, so it'll be here tomorrow. But, uh, yeah, that's, that's the only snag I've run into. Uh, that thing is under there. The parking brakes hooked up. I have not put the drive shaft on yet. That will be next. And I'll let you guys know how that goes. And then I'm going to flip the shock mounts around and I'm actually going to flip them upside down too. So I'm going to run it to where the U bolt is upside down under the axle. So I don't have thread sticking down. I know that that will be upside down for the shock mount. I'll probably end up welding those things on at some point, um, but this is you know a much different build than a lot of you guys are doing. So that mount right there is probably exactly where you want this mount to be uh, if you're just doing this in your excursion normally. But I'm gonna do some other things and I just figured I'd let you guys know what I'm doing. So anyway, on to put the drive shaft in. Alrighty, well. You can guess what I found out by the fact that the drive shaft is not sitting in it. Uh, this flange is set for a bigger um, setup on the drive shaft. So uh, this puppy is going to need a new drive shaft. Now, what that means for you guys is you need to pull the rear drive shaft off of the F-250. But then you also need to make sure it's the same wheelbase F-250. So 137 is the wheelbase of the excursion. And so you're going to be looking for an F-250 like that, or you are just going to get a custom drive shaft like I'm going to do. So I'm going to measure up the drive shaft and uh, I'm going to call Quigley, see if they can't knock one out before Moab. All right. So I played with these shock mounts and I flipped them over like I told you guys I was going to do, but I hate it. Uh, they are two different mounts. One was for the front, one was on the front, one was on the back, and they just don't work right. Um, and I don't love it. So what I'm going to do, and I will up you guys, you guys in the next video when I get this done, is I'm going to pull these ones off of the excursion axle, and I'm going to hopefully get this skid plate off of it. I think it just comes off with the bolts. If not, I'm going to cut it off. Um, and I'm going to flip them over and put them, because they are the same. And so when I flip them over, they'll at least sit at the same spot. And uh, the reason I want to flip them over is because, look at the clearance. Uh, that is a big deal there to get the rocks slid underneath it. So uh, anyway, I would switch. Uh, my suggestion for you, if you're just doing a stock swap, is I put the mounts from your excursion axle on here. There's a little like nub on the other side and just put them on either side of them. And it's not really a big deal if it can move it over an inch or so. So anyway, yeah. All right, so to sum it up, the drive shaft does not fit. If you are going to, uh, not lengthwise, but the flange on it is different. The flange on the axle is different. The length is actually just fine, um, but the, the bolts don't line up on the flange. So 
Uh, if you are going to do this swap, you need to make sure that you grab the drive shaft from your donor or just that plate. You can probably put that plate on the factory drive shaft, uh, but I'm going to get one made. I'm going to get a double carbon shaft made. Now, my pin angle is pretty crazy now with the shackle flip. It really pulled the front of the axle up, and so I need a double carbon shaft. I, I'm going to want one anyway. As we go down the road, I'm going to want a beefier one, so... Uh, I am reaching out to drive shaft companies and uh, working on getting that done. And uh, the other thing, the shock mounts, I am going to pull the ones off the excursion axle. I haven't done that yet, um, but I'm going to, and I'm going to flip them over just for now uh, to give me something I need. Uh, it's going to really limit my shocks though, as far as length goes. So that'll be interesting. Uh, the up travel of this truck, I'm not expecting a whole bunch of up travel because the 40s are going to get into the fenders um but i want a lot of down travel and I, I don't know we're going to see the shocks might have to be too short it's going to it's going to take some real engineering here so uh that's going to be the hard stuff for somebody like me uh for you guys just set it up factory run your factory shocks like this is going to a factory bolt in on that still have not tested the speed sensor that will be an update in a future video and uh yeah, other than that, let me, I'm thinking through. Oh, the factory F-250 line. I got a 2005 factory F-250 rear chassis to axle line. That's 24 inches, and it bolted right into the excursion. So that's awesome. Uh, so uh, yeah, all set up on brakes. All set up e-brake stuff worked. And so your big key items are drive shaft and that's really it, is the drive shaft. Oh, and that speed sensor. Uh, you gotta switch that speed sensor over uh, and then stay tuned to my videos to see if it actually works. <laughs> Fingers crossed, because I hope it does. Uh, but anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. If you got some value out of this video and you are doing a coil swap or you just wanna see the Bob excursion continue and rise, uh, this thing is really taking off here. We are hoping to make it to Moab uh, the 1st of April. And I have got a lot more work to do, but one axle is in, so that is a big deal. So anyway, thank you for all the growth. We are at uh, 2330 right now, I think, for subscribers. 2330, even, I think, when I make this video. And so i um, just really grateful to you guys. Uh, this is why I'm doing it. I want to help you guys. So comment below with what you need help with, what you're trying to do next, and uh, let me see if I can help you and make a video on it or the excursions, or if you're just entertained by Blue Bob uh, getting built insanely, um, I appreciate the subscribe and the like of this video. So anyway, thanks for watching. We will see you guys next time.